Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Igar Thanreo. Um, I'm the staff engineer with Riverfair Support. Uh, today we are going to take a look at App Response 11, how to generate and upload a system demo. So here's the agenda. Uh, we're going to see what is an AR11 system, um, what does it contain, uh, what are the different types of systems, um, and how to generate them via the web UI um, and the admin CLI. Also, we will take a quick look on how to upload uh, a system that's been created via the admin CLI to Riverbed support. Uh, we'll do a quick demo and uh, just highlight a couple of uh, good useful KB articles. Uh, the AR11 system contains uh, diagnostic logs uh, that are used by Riverbed support uh, personnel and engineering uh, to uh, analyze the issue and find the root cause uh, of the issues that are arising in the field. Um, usually when a problem is reported through a Riverbed uh, ticket, the first thing that is requested by support is a system um, or a diagnostic bundle. So the system contains the diagnostic logs of all the features that are enabled onto the app response, uh, like ASA, WTA, uh, the DBA features, um, and the UC features, as well as the flow exports. It also contains uh, various configurations files for these processes. And um, like any Linux-based appliance, it has a system level logs like uh, messages, demessages file, boot logs. Um, along with that, we also have a few uh, SQLite uh, databases that store some metrics about these features. Uh, lastly, uh, the system uh, may contain a core dump or process crash. So there are basically two types of uh, system. One is a log-only system, another one is cores-only system, and the third one, of course, is uh, it includes both logs and cores. The log only system includes uh, log files for the processes. Uh, it contains the stack traces, um, additional diagnostic logs of versions and the version history, upgrade history of the appliance. Uh, it also contains the backtrace of the most recent code dump, uh, but it doesn't contain all the code dumps. Uh, for that, there is a core only uh, system uh, which contains all the available core files onto the appliance uh, as well as its equivalent backtrace. 95% uh, of the time, uh, you would be uh, requested a system that includes both the logs as well as cores, uh, unless until uh, explicitly specified by a riverbed support personnel to just do one or other. Um, there is a system metric database checkbox if you go into the web UI section where you generate the system. This uh, system metric database basically uh, includes a few SQLite databases uh, that has information about uh, the system and the process level statistics like uh, uh, flow exports, uh, how many flows were rejected, you know, number of active connections um, and details of those sorts. Always uh, include the system metric database when um, creating a system unless uh, requested otherwise. There are two ways to generate the system on app response appliance. One is from the web UI and the other one is from the CLI. Uh, the first one, let's take a look on the web UI. You just need to log into the app response 11 uh, using your admin credentials and navigate to the administration drop down menu where you will see a system section. In that section, you will have a drop down uh, that says log type, uh, which includes either logs, cores, or both. Um, <clears throat> there is an optional uh, metadata uh, header that includes um, riverbed support uh, case number that you will get that case ID if you open up a support ticket. What this then uh, does it, it includes the name of that case uh, number in the system uh, name itself. So when you upload the system to riverbed support, it automatically gets attached to the relevant case uh, that you have created. Uh, there is a checkbox that says include system metric database. This checkbox is checked by default, so leave it as is. Um, and then click generate. Uh, once um, you click generate, uh, it's going to go from system uh, generation from pending state uh, and eventually to a done state, uh, which means that the system generation is complete. You can then highlight the system and click on the download system button uh, on the web UI. 
The next method is through the admin CLI. Uh, you'll need uh, SSH credentials to log in to the app response appliance. Uh, once you log in uh, and authenticate successfully, uh, you need to type enable and then configuration key mode to go into the privilege uh, uh, command. And then the format looks like the following. Your system create uh, the case ID, uh, the case number, uh, the log type would be, you know, both codes or logs are the options. And the system matrix is true or false, include that in the system. Uh, the format uh, is shown on the screen below. Uh, we'll take a look at this uh, closely once we do the demo. Uh, most of the time, you will be using the web UI to generate the app response uh, uh, system. But in the very rare situations, if the web UI is unresponsive, uh, this is an alternate method of generating the system through the admin CLI. Um, you can upload the system directly through the admin CLI to Riverbed support. The prerequisites are just that you need to have FTP control and data channels open to Riverbed, ftp.riverbed.com uh, server. And uh, you can see what are the systems that are generated using system list command. And the system upload command is basically system, uh, system uh, upload system ID. You will get the ID from the system list command use that and URI which is basically the Riverbed FTP URI and you you put your credentials in there. The credentials are basically anonymous as a username and uh, uh, anything that contains at the rate uh, as the password so that would be your uh, email address. Uh, let's do a quick demo of uh, how this um, system generation works from the web UI as well as the uh, SSH CLI admin access. All right, so this is my app response 11 appliance. Um, I've logged in and then I can go into uh, the administration menu and there is a system option right over here. Um, this is the drop down. Um, most of the time you will be selecting both and uh, including the uh, case ID. Um, in my case, the case ID is 108.1822. Uh, and I'm going to just create uh, the system. Uh, the status of the system is pending. Uh, right now it's basically going and getting all the uh, log informations and code informations from the appliance and uh, it is bundling it up into a, a tarball and once the process completes uh, the status will change into done. While the system gets created uh, let's go to the admin CLI and see what are the options available over there to generate the system. Okay. You need to authenticate using the admin credentials. Once you have authenticated, you can type enable and config T. And let's see the available options for the systems so or system. If you just hit tap complete, uh, you can either create, delete, list, or upload the system. Let's see what are the available systems on this appliance. It should list the one that is created uh, via the web UI once it completes. So system list. As you can see, the system that we kicked off from the web UI uh, is still into the pending state. And let's wait for that um, system to get created and uh, we can create a new system through the admin CLI. Okay, uh, let's check again if the system has completed. All right, so okay, so it has completed now. The size of it is 823 um, MB. Uh, now let's try and create a system from the uh, admin CLI itself. So type system, or complete option, um, double tap it to create. Uh, Option is case ID. I'm going to put my case ID 108.1822. Um, next option is lock type, autocomplete. I want to include both. And um, next is system metrics, and I want to include the system metric database in my system. Said so that, as you can see, the system ID is 15 over here, and the one that we generated through the web UI. That ID was the system ID 14. 
So uh, once the system uh, ID 15 completes, uh, we will use the system upload command to upload it to Riverford FTP. Okay, so uh, the system uh, ID number 15 that we uh, kicked off using the admin CLI has uh, been completed. So we can use the system upload command to upload it. So the next parameter is system ID. Uh, we want to upload system ID number 15. Um, URI, the URI for Riverbed FTP is FTP dot com slash incoming and the credentials would be username would be anonymous and let's say uh, any email address that you have that's it so it says that the upload id is number five and um, it is uh, currently in a pending state so it will go and get uploaded to the uh, Riverbed FTP. If you want to check uh, if the system uh, is getting uploaded or not and if it has completed you can do system upload list. So our upload ID was upload number five and it's still in pending state but um, I had uploaded previously some other systems and you will see the status has done. Uh, as you can see, this one was last started on March 20th and it got done. This is the old status. So that's the way you can uh, generate a system through the admin CLI and upload it through the admin CLI itself um, if you um, didn't have any access to the web interface. So let's go uh, finish up the presentation the next one is some useful uh, knowledge base articles uh, kb s32027 uh, will detail uh, what we spoke today on this uh, video tutorial and the kb s13970 will tell you how you can upload the files to your bit support uh, the hyperlinks for both these kbs will be included at the bottom of this uh, video onto the youtube channel uh, thank you for watching and have a great day